The greatest value that you get out of this program at the end of the week is you learn how much control you have over your health because you feel like a different person. It's nice to see the data with the pounds lost, if that's a priority for you. But you feel like such a different person. Those of you who have been here before know well what I am talking about. That you have like this sort of buzz, this high. You just feel like another level of energy and also just mental clarity. And that teaches you something. It teaches you, I mean, the big picture is simply that integrating parts of these lifestyle into your own will make a profound difference in our health and longevity and sex life and brilliance and humor and everything else in between. And I tell you that, um, I mean, the reason we have such an ability to learn from this kind of lifestyle is because of this. All right, this, is, this is the core of our health right here. And this lifestyle is what is feeding this. And when you feed this and you feel like such a different person, it's like, whoa, gosh, I had no idea that before I was kind of more at status quo level. And now I'm like at the elite level. So what I feel is of highest impact is the diet and the exercise here. And I'm going to make sure I cover a few key pointers about um, the diet that I think will be easy to make your own. But I also just want to take your questions. So we'll start with those. I can't promise I can answer everything. I ain't no doctor, but I'll do my best. This is what I love. What should we be asking you about? Anything you Nutrition want. Nutrition questions? Yes. yes. Well, I'm always curious to hear what people have to say about soy and tofu in particular. Mm -hmm. Well, soy products are okay. I mean, to tofu and, and uh, edamame and tempeh. Tempeh is just fermented whole soybeans. They've been in the diet for thousands of years in many cultures. And it works okay. It's a balance. But uh, processed soy products like uh, soy milk and, and different soy protein and things of that nature, it screws with your balance a little bit. Um, the chemistry of it is it basically just raises your estrogen. Everybody has estrogen, everybody has testosterone, it's a balance. And it, most of the time people need more testosterone, not estrogen. Minor detail, it's not going to make or break your health, but I definitely don't like uh, soy milk and soy protein, I think those, no, other so, like soy cheese and things of that nature, it ain't great. Mm -hmm. Tofu has been in the Asian diet for a long time. As tofu or tempeh? Both. Tempeh is better because it's the whole soybean just fermented. Mm -hmm. So where tofu is a, a little bit more processed. So if you drink coffee in the mornings and soy, I have a soy latte. Uh-huh, yeah. Um, it ain't great. I, again, it's not going to... See, the, the benefit of soy is it's, a, it's an animal protein alternative. Not to say that animal protein is bad, but I think in general, for most people, it's best to cut back a little bit, at least a little bit on animal protein. The reason we can do that now in this day and age is because for the first time in 100 years, we now have every plant food grain, uh, fruit and vegetable available uh, 12 months a year. Didn't happen before. You know, in the winter time in, in the United States, it was like meat and potatoes and sauerkraut in the winter. That's all we had. And so now, because you have all of these other plant proteins, you don't have to do that. That's why, uh, well, anyway, soy, soy milk ain't great. It really isn't. Um, I, I personally consider re regular milk to be a far superior product. It doesn't work for everybody. I know everybody, uh, you know, there's a bit of a buzz about that, you know, lactose intolerance. And what I feel has triggered that so much in recent years is uh, low-fat milk, like 2% in fat-free milk, that I don't know, we shouldn't even call it low-fat milk. We should just call it lactose concentrate. You take the fat out, and it's just a greater concentration of lactose. Yeah, yeah sure. You get you're getting protein in milk, but you get pro, you know you get protein from everything. Um, and actually, this may raise some eyebrows, but what is the best quality of dairy? What's the best part about dairy? The the quality of fat. The quality of fat. Well, so here's here's what I consider to be the elite dairy product: butter or ghee. Mm -hmm. Ghee is basically just 
ghee is like a processed butter where it's been low boiled until the residual proteins separate and so it's basically just pure butter oil so um, and the advantage there's only one advantage really is that you can cook high heat with it it doesn't burn or butter will eventually burn uh, but it's important to have some saturated fats in your diet this is made of saturated fat that when we went to a low-fat diet back in the 90s, because everybody thought fat was making you fat, everybody just got cranky and fatter. It's, a, it's, real, it's, it's true, it really is. And so it's not going to a low-fat diet or a, or a diet that's free of saturated fat. For some people, that may be a good thing if they have serious heart disease. But most of us just need more high-quality fat. And I consider butter, as far as saturated fats go, to be the elite. Yeah. Now, yes, I put it neck and neck with coconut oil and macadamia nuts and other nuts and seeds. And, uh, again, you got to have it. It's a brain food. It really is. And it does require some moderation because saturated fat is what raises your cholesterol. Not if it comes from a plant. Well, yeah, even, a, even coconut, even though it's cholesterol-free, any saturated fat, even if it's cholesterol-free... The way it interacts with your body, it does raise your cholesterol, which again, it isn't, isn't so bad. Um, is a couple tablespoons a day of butter or coconut oil going to raise your cholesterol? No, it's not. So that would be a quarter stick of butter. If that's, if that's sort of the max of your saturated fats, if you're getting your saturated fats from butter and you're not eating uh, animal lard like bacon and sausage and ground beef and fried chicken, you're in the clear. Those are the ones, those saturated fats, animal lard, those are the ones that can screw with your cholesterol quite a bit. And that's why I'm saying in this day and age, more than ever, we do need to just cut back a little bit on, on those kinds of animal, animal protein. So it is good quality protein, but again, now we can get it from plant foods just because of what we have available year round. So where, do you, where do you think protein should come from? Uh, well... Because, because now we have the option, I think that, again, for just overall health and longevity, it's good to cut back on animal protein, and I think it's also good to supplement with some kind of protein powder if you do that. I do. I'm a believer in that. What kind of protein powder? Well, um, I don't like to brag about my stuff too much, but, um, you guys have my protein formula in your morning green drink. Mm -hmm. It's a sprouted brown rice and hemp seed blend. I love um, Definitely skip soy protein, ain't great. And whey protein, that's not good. It's not good. It's, it makes you, it's whey protein ain't great. Really? It really Why? isn't. Well, it's, it's, it's acid forming. And it's like, it's, it's gluey. It's, it's constipating. Um, again, I, I, as far as a whole dairy product, like whole milk, it's, a, it's balanced. It's cool. Da whole milk is actually a very... Ba milk has been in the human diet all over the world for thousands of years. The body has, um, has adapted well to it. And again, I think the problem is, is just we're all drinking lactose concentrate with all of these low-fat dairy So whole milk is better than 2%? Absolutely. Yeah. So Absolutely. So from the three that they serve in the coffee places, <laughs> half and half whole milk, 2%. I mean, I personally, with, with uh, hot drinks, I like half and half because you're only adding a little bit, you know, it, mm -hmm. it, yeah. you're adding less. Lights it out fast, yeah. Yeah, and, and, uh, and yeah. another reason to sort of regulate uh, dairy, dairy protein is it's, is it's mucus forming. Yeah, that's um, it. Like, stomach gets bloated. Yeah, so that would, that would be uh, whey protein, it would be too much cheese, um, but... A little dairy is cool. It does require some moderation. You can definitely overdo it. So if you have to do like, protein shakes after working out, what it, what products yours obviously you recommend? But it, I I'm a I'm definitely a believer in having protein right after a workout. That's right. when your body is right. most right. adept to really soak it up to repair to do that uh, to repair. fix the the wear and tear that you just put on your body. In the form of what a shake. Yes, and here's why, is that right after a sturdy workout, sometimes you just don't have an appetite. I personally can even feel a little queasy, and I don't have an appetite for about an hour. And so having just something that you can drink down that doesn't require digestion, like a meal, just a drink that you can pound it. I don't even, I don't even make a shake or anything. I just shake up some, pro, some straight protein in a water bottle and boom, down it. 
And then I'm and then I have a meal like an hour later. So what kind of protein is it? It's your. It's a you, it's you a blend. It's a it's a blend of basically of sprouted brown rice and hemp with a few other medicinal herbs to basically just help um, the metabolic process get to get the most for it. It's more like a protein, which is bread. Is there a brand it's besides Billy. yours? It's his. Oh, what are yours then? I <laughs> have <laughs> so, another question about milk. Um, what are good milk alternatives that are good? Like That's a really important thing to address because, again, many people have become lactose sensitive. So, as far as alternatives go, you know, all the boxed milks I just don't really like. You know, they're 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 manufactured. They're typically made out of different nuts or seeds, like almond milk, uh, soy milk, hazelnut. Milk. I mean, there are so many. Um, and they're okay, but see, the thing is, is when you uh, heat up nuts and seeds and, the, the, and these products are pasteurized and then boxed, um, the oils in there go a little rancid, and, and it ain't great for your thyroid. It's not perfect. Um, what would I do? Okay, so the milk we have here, all we do is throw hemp seeds and water in the blender, and hemp seeds are oh, it's a nice... Yeah, yeah. So and you buy hemp seeds at the health food store? Yeah, just raw hemp seeds. And the reason that hemp oh. seeds are an advantage is it's a non-fibrous seed, so it blends totally smooth. Yeah. Just water and hemp seeds. That's it. And it's great. It's, um, it's great. Can you make... Okay, because I have two girls, and I'm worried about the yeah. amount of like, hormones and stuff that are in milk. That's also important to address. More than ever... It's really important with animal products of all kinds, dairy, eggs, meat, to only go with the elite in this day and age. Only the elite. I mean, we're just talking about in general in your lifestyle. If you're at a birthday party or going out to dinner with friends, I say to heck with eat whatever you want. But with, with animal products, elite. So with the um, raw hemp seeds and the water and a blender, can I make enough that could last for the week, or do oh, I do yeah. that every day? Well, like how long does it last? <laughs> it's fine for days. For it doesn't. It doesn't go bad. It's not gonna. Can you eat it without? Well, when you, when you heat nut milk milks made from different nuts and seeds, they do go a little rancid. It screws. That's a really important thing to address, and that was the whole buzz about fat back in the '90s, thinking all fat made you fat. It's cooked fats that uh, fats break down under heat. They break down under heat in a way that it can then interfere with your thyroid, like I was just talking about. Thyroid sets off the ripple effect to then your metabolism goes down and then weight goes up. Not the case with butter, ghee, coconut oil, and other saturated fats. That's why those are important because those are the oils that you want to cook with. They're heat stable. Great. And with other um, unsaturated fats, what that means basically is at room temperature, it's a liquid. Where saturated fats at room temperature are a solid. Mm -hmm. So with unsaturated fats, that would be olive oil, um, oils and some nuts and seeds like almonds, uh, flax seeds, hemp seeds, um, avocados. What are, what are some other unsaturated fats? Sa yeah, other, other oils um, that... It's, it's good to have them raw. Olive oil is an amazing food. If you just have raw olive oil over your salad or in various dishes, ingredients, you're never going to make yourself fat on olive oil. See, the, the cool Un, thing un, is... Unheated olive oil. Raw, unheated. So what is raw olive oil? Is well, that, all, is all, that all bottled... Extra virgin, most virgin, extra virgin? Extra virgin just means uh, that it's, it's basically... Extra virgin means it's um, cold-pressed... Cold Cold pressed means that it's just been pressed at a cool temperature and it hasn't been heated. I'm trying to remember what extra virgin just means low something. I forgot. Do you remember what extra virgin means, Rosemary? Extra virgin? Yeah. Low low acid something or another. I thought it meant it was just the first squeeze. First yeah. first squeeze it'll say uh, first cold pressed. Yeah. You're so funny. <laughs> Well, anyway, laundry. sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I forgot what extra. So, it took me a minute to get it. All the oils that are liquid at room temperature, which are which First should we cook with? Like, uh, some some say like high heat safflower oil. Yeah. So so like the the oils that you often see products cooked with that would be uh, safflower oil, canola oil, vegetable oil, soybean oil. Those are very mediocre. They sort of work, but they definitely go rancid. All these when you cook it. Absolutely, absolutely. Not as not as much as like olive oil and really heat sensitive oils like flaxseed oil. 
or fish oils, those are extremely heat sensitive. Any unsaturated fat is heat sensitive. Uh, canola is a little more heat heat sturdy than others, but still sensitive. So you're so, saying if, if I was, we want to saute something, then, then... Ideally, most of the time, using uh, ghee, butter, or coconut oil. Those are far superior. Okay. Far superior. Is it going to make a difference overnight? No. Daily, ripple effect, ripple effect, ripple effect, after days, weeks, months, you bet. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I thought that I heard that regular olive oil was good for cooking, but the virgin olive oil is better like on salads. Well, see, the thing, I know the Italians cook with olive oil, and every, <laughs> every body type is different. I know they seem to get away with it, but again, it's it, it ain't great. Okay. It really isn't. Olive oil is an amazing food. Have it raw. Use it. Okay, you can use, if, like, if you steam some quinoa or something, mm -hmm. steam some vegetables, it's fine to pour it in there after it's done cooking. You, when you're pouring it on hot food, that's not going to make it go rancid like if you're sautéing with it. So, roasting. what? You don't direct you would, like you would toss your vegetables in olive oil. Ideally not. If you try sautéing stuff with, I think butter makes everything taste amazing. People love butter because, again, our bodies adapted to dairy and thousands of... Hey, Brief dude. intermission, guys. Just wanted to say oh adios. I'm leaving. Oh, oh, just, you know, no hugs to say. No goodbye. <laughs> just farewells. We'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs> Thank, Thank you so much. much. Yeah. yeah. Thank, Thank you. I buy your greens, though. Cool. Yeah. Right on. I know I recognize you. Yeah, Lisa okay. laughed when I was here last year. Okay. Oh, cool. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, right I'll on. listen to the rest. Okay, good. Ask your questions, guys. What about whole wheat? So, 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 yeah. Yeah, we should talk about wheat. One second. Yeah, before we move on from fats, we have a couple more just points to cover. So you said to cook with butter or coconut oil. You don't like those two choices, do you know? No. Have you tried cooking with ghee? With ghee. Ghee is ghee is just butter oil, and it tastes different. Ghee is considered to be like this total elite superfood in many Asian cultures. Um, it's been very any any any, any natural food store. Yeah. You can make your own. It's easy. Yeah, all you do is uh, you just melt butter, you low boil it for about 15 minutes, like really low boil, and you'll see all the protein just sink to the bottom. It's like the white bits, and then you just pour it through a strainer, and you're golden. And and uh, it, it's an oil that doesn't need to be refrigerated. It, it'll last years. It never really goes bad. It's amazing. It's rad, rad stuff. You actually, you had the... In your Monday night soup. <laughs> Not me, because I'm vegan. Oh. So for those of us who are vegan... Vegan's awesome. That's awesome. Uh, so, but I've been cooking with high heat safflower oil. Uh -huh. Thinking, you know, it's just up to 400 degrees. Uh -huh. Thinking that that was probably the best option. We have coconut oil in the fridge. But I, I doesn't need to be refrigerated. Oh, no, no, okay. ever. There are, different, there are different qualities of coconut oil. Get the cold press. Cold pressed is always better. Okay. Yeah, cold pressed. What percent of you of, of your diet, the daily calories, should come from protein? See, that's that's a tough. If we're not bodybuilders. That's a tough question to answer because every body type is different. I mean, there are, there are Asian cultures where they subsist on rice and a few vegetables and a little tofu, and then the Eskimos subsist on whale blubber. Right. So, uh, I mean, there are just there are literally thousands of different body types that have just adapted to their climate over the last 10,000 years all over the world. And now, I mean, in the United States, we're just a mix. It's crazy. Everybody's nutrition needs are different, and I like to just uh, try a variety of things. And, and you're quite tuned into your health. As I can tell, you're a healthy-looking dude, and you ha and you live the vegan lifestyle. So you, I'm actually only 20, but, uh, <laughs> you you've probably just gravitated towards super certain foods that you really like, and you got to trust your body's instinct. We do have that health instinct that when you're navigating in the realm of just like whole plant foods, just fruit and vegetables, you're gonna have some favorites. You're going to have some favorites, and that's your, that's your health instincts talking to you. You can't really navigate with that so much in the realm of, like, cheeseburgers and french fries and, and too many processed grains, grains, wheat products and things, corn products and things of that nature because 
those aren't foods that the body has uh, evolved with over the last 10,000 years. They just aren't. So um, while you're here, while you're here, you're going to have some meals that are just like your favorite, where you're saying to yourself, I love that. Put that, integrate that meal into your diet at least twice a week when you get home. Do it, do it as a trial period. I don't, want to, I don't want you to feel like overburdened, like, oh my gosh, I'm having to make this big change to my lifestyle. Just do it for a month, your first month after this program. I want you to integrate these few points that I'm talking about. Just do it. Just live this, this recipe and see what happens. See what happens. We. Um, are we are we good on fats before we change subjects? Um, when you talk about that shape, how many milligrams? Whatever it was. So, in general, I would say uh, between 50 and 100 grams of protein a day. Um, lower for women, higher for men. It also depends on your body mass and, and metabolism, things of that nature. But you know what? Here's the thing, is you actually have uh, more flexibility and wiggle room than you would think. You know, plus or minus 20 grams of protein, is that going to really make a difference? Probably not. Probably, and again, everybody's nutrition needs are different. How much protein you need versus how much how much protein you need is is going to be different. But again, your body has more flexibility than you would think. The body absolutely knows how to adapt to a healthy diet. If your diet is is an abundance of fruits and vegetables and a little like whole grains and and then just like a small amount of elite animal protein between uh, dairy, eggs, whatever it may be, you're, you're in the clear. You're in the clear. It really isn't going to make a, a difference in your energy or your longevity or how you, how you feel. It just ain't. You have flexibility. You really do. Um, the whole thing where we need to count our calories and how many grams of this, how many grams of that is ridiculous. It's totally ridiculous. Um, can I play that with that for one second? Because you're talking about elite animal protein, but how available is that really? Protein, animal protein, that hormones, antibiotics, and you know pesticides. I know that's a it's, tough one. I mean, I've heard it's like you know less than one percent of all available yeah. animal protein is, is what you're. Doing. It's true. So are you better off with? Not, and I'm a vegan for humane reasons, not for health reasons. Right. So it's not an issue for me whether it's vegan right. or not. I'm never going to eat it. But for people who do eat animal protein, are they better off not eating it if they can't get this so-called elite protein, animal protein, because they're going to be invariably eating hormones, antibiotics, and pesticides? Yeah, yeah. They would be better off not eating it. Uh, there is no question that the shysty meat products that we have now are substantial wear high, are substantial wear and tear on our health, substantial. Would that, include, that would include dairy and eggs, too. Well, eggs from battery cans. Shop organic. All the animal products they eat are organic, which ain't perfect in this day and age. It ain't perfect. It's just a different set of chemicals, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, there's debate about that. Because I mean, the berries, for example, is the same. This crow, you have organic and non and non organic, mm -hmm. but it's in the same crop, so it's probably contaminated as well. So it's <laughs> probably bullshit, no? The, I can't say I'm an expert on that. Yeah, totally. I think it depends on the source, on the specific source. Right. They're both bad, though. Wild versus organic. They're both. There is no. I have a couple more questions about protein. What are your favorite beans? Well, um, as far as ease of digestibility, I would say lentils. Um, beans are hard to digest. I mean, beans make you gassy. Um, they're okay. You know, beans are, are okay. Um, it ain't great. <laughs> okay for what? It's okay. What are, I asked him what his, what his favorite beans were that have a lot of protein. Beans are okay. And I, I'm asking because one of my daughters doesn't eat meat. And so uh -huh. I give her protein. She loves like black beans and she loves lentils. And she, I think she gets a lot of protein from beans. Yeah, see the thing, the thing know, else, like, everybody's eating canned beans. If you, if you soak your own beans, soak them overnight, mm -hmm. and you'll notice the water gets really fermenty and bubbly looking. Mm -hmm. And then dump that out, and then low boil it for a couple hours. You're you're all right. You're all right. You're all right. It's okay. Okay. My 
my next question is about egg whites. Um, are they healthy? I eat oh my gosh, the whole egg white thing is I such a disaster. But I'm so addicted to them. Like, I eat <laughs> right. Because it's, the, it's no the yellow that has all the that. nutrients. Absolutely. I, and so, I buy them in the carton where you just pour them, and so I don't even know if it's good. But I, I Out of all the animal products, I consider eggs to be the very best. <laughs> eggs have been in the human diet all over the world for the whole thousands life. of years. Everywhere. Everywhere. If you look at all the all the different cultures, all none of them are vegan. I think it's awesome to be vegan just for just the the, the humanity <laughs> factor. It's I, I really revere it as being awesome. I tried it. I was I was actually vegan for fourteen years and I ate such a huge volume of food, but I was so skinny that I my body just didn't have the muscle mass to hold my frame right. So I was like this. You know? Again, it works different for have you everybody. Had vegan cake? <laughs> <laughs> that's not a problem for us we struggle because there's vegan junk food that makes us fat but yeah yeah if true. you're not going to eat any junk food at all then i could see how you might get well see here's the thing is that uh when people go vegetarian or vegan they just start eating a bunch of grains too much too many processed grains mm -hmm. and your body's like man all of a sudden your body shifts to just having way more carbs Okay, fine, if you're a runner and you're just doing tons of cardio and tons of exercise, that works. But when all of a sudden you just start putting more carb f fuel in your body, your body's like, what do we do with all these carbs? It's stored as fat to be burned as fuel later. But that's why oftentimes people, when they go vegetarian, all of a sudden they just, you know, they gain, they gain some weight. Yeah. And so it's imp it's important if you're gonna go vegetarian if you're if you're gonna gravitate toward just having less protein less animal protein more plant foods more just fruit and vegetables not too much fruit you got to balance your sugar intake um, you definitely have some flexibility there but it's all about plant foods and I know it'd be a little depressing if you just had to eat salads all the time um, but I I'm a huge fan of making like vegetable stews and soups. The body has adapted beautifully to soups and stews. It really has. The whole raw food diet thing, eh, you know, you've probably heard about that, how you're just eating raw plant foods. Sure, you're getting more nutrients and enzymes, but the body hasn't adapted well to that. You know, eventually your 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 spleen just kind of goes, and you're, and you're getting cold hands and feet all the time, and it's it actually turns out to be just more wear and tear on the body but cooked plant foods again they've been in the human diet since the beginning and the body absolutely love loves it i am a huge fan of soups and they're the easiest recipe to make they really are people just don't know how because they never do it but it's all a matter of just chopping up all your favorite vegetables throwing it in a pot low boiling it for like 20 minutes and then here's what makes a soup here's what makes it amazing is you scoop out about a third of it into the blender and just whip it down into a smooth sauce, add whatever, dump chili powder or curry powder, salt, whatever you want in there, and then pour it back in. So that's like the really rich, hearty base. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And then you have to add good quality fat. That's one reason also why people are just like, soup, really? So you've got to add like butter and soup is awesome. Again, you're never going to make yourself fat on butter. Okay, love, okay. Nature, butter right love nature. Love so nature. So, butter. Butter olive oil and soup is cool, but we were talking about how raw olive olive oil is uh, is best raw. So, make some awesome salad dressing. When you're having salad, I'm telling you, just have as much olive oil as you want. Again, you're never going to make yourself fat on high quality oils and fat. Law of nature it can actually have the opposite effect. Here's why. What satiates your appetite more than anything is fats. Fats essentially prevent you from overdoing it. Here's an example. When you have a plate of pasta, you can eat until you're physically just like full. And you're still craving something, so you eat ice cream. Your body is craving fat. Your body is craving fat. You can actually subsist on a zero-carb diet, no grains, and just have your fats from coconut, like... There, there are cultures where they just subsist on coconut curry and, and plant foods, and the body adapts so well to that, where, again, carbs just don't satiate the same way. Okay, again, if you're doing tons of exercise and you just need that fuel, 
great, but fats and carbs are both fuel. They both work the exact same. They're both fuel. And so having sufficient, good quality fat is really what staves your appetite to prevent you from overdoing it. Does that make sense? Yep. But you got to go with the good quality fats because the shiesty fats absolutely have the opposite effect. Remember, when, when you uh, fry foods or like hydrogenated vegetable oils, those fats break down under heat and screw with your thyroid. So it ha that's why back in the 90s everybody thought all fat made you fat. No, no, no. So for olive oil, is there going to be a, 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 are we looking anything on the label besides extra virgin? I mean, cold pressed. Cold pressed. I mean, it's all, it's all, no, they're all good. I mean, again, I always shop for the elite. I always shop for the elite. I always look for the organic stuff. Organic ain't perfect in this day and age, but it sure is better than all the just status quo mediocre stuff. It sure is. Sorry. I missed that. But butter is, is okay then to use butter. Butter is butter is awesome. Really? Butter is awesome. You got to have some saturated fats in your diet. Everybody who goes to these, everybody who thinks, okay, so again, back in the '90s, it was hydrogenated vegetable oils, art, basically artificial saturated fat that just screwed with everybody. And back in the '90s, it was just all about cheap food. It was like, look, we can eat for pennies. And so we started incorporating all of these cheaper, better value foods into our diet, and everybody started getting heart disease and fat. And then we realized, whoa, actually it's not low fat, it's about having the right quality fat, the elite fats. Butter, dairy has been in the human diet all over the world. Many, many years. Not in Asia. True. True. Their diets are totally different. Instead of butter, they love coconut. Yeah. Which in great. India they do a lot of dairy. Right. In India they do. So with the soup, fascinated by the soup, so you throw your favorite veggies in a pot. Yes. What, what is Which in there in terms of I can stuff? send you a recipe, but also you can get an ashram recipe book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, like all we do with this soup, tons of sweet potato all chopped up, tons of broccoli, tons of kale. Uh, you can throw... Um, I mean, I make vegetable soup all the time, but I, I yeah. throw a, some sort of canned broth in it. So I'm yeah. wondering, like, what, what can my base be? Water? Oh, just water. Just water. So, so here's what I like to do. You, you just chop up all the veggies, and then you pour water in till it just comes up to the veggies so that when you pack all the veggies in, nothing's floating. It's like okay. the water just barely comes up to the top. When you low boil it for about 20 minutes, okay, it'll, all the veggies become soft. Uh -huh. Then you scoop about a third, about 25% to a third of the pot out into the blender, whip it down smooth, and you pour it back in, and that's your really meaty, hearty base. It's amazing. And, and then while it's in the blender blending, I like to dump whatever spices you want in there, like a chili powder blend, or again, curry powder, salt. You can throw an onion in there. And, uh, th and the great thing about that is is then you, you've made a big pot, it's your week's worth of food. That's what I do, and you can always mix it up depending on what you feel you're craving, what veggies feel right at this particular season for you. Um, and then and then you can, and then you cook up a pot of soup and it's great to, great to have some raw greens with it. Uh, everybody kind of is like, man, I don't feel like making a salad tonight, but you know what's the most important food in our diet? Unquestion unquestionably number one, greens. Greens, greens, greens. The big picture here with our diet, what we're trying to do, what we're trying to do is pull the funk out and put the good stuff back in. And greens are number one for pulling the funk out. The greener the food, the better. We're talking about all leafy greens, uh, kale, arugula, chard, spinach, parsley, cilantro, bait, all of it, all of it. That it's chlorophyll. Chlorophyll, green drinks, blue-green algae. It's chlorophyll that makes things green, okay? And the way it works is chlorophyll going through your bloodstream, it has a negative charge where it basically just sucks up metabolic waste, heavy metals, free radicals, any toxin. It sucks it up to then be excreted from the body. One reason that people have, like, this stubborn weight that they can't seem to get rid of is... Well, it's, tox it's toxicity that's built up in the body. You're, when you have too much toxin, when you have too much toxin, um, your body produces extra fat cells. Your fat cells soak up that toxin to protect these vital organs. These are all your, I mean, this is the core of your health. 
And so that's your body's self-defense mechanism. So the whole thing, for many people to lose weight, they just need to get the toxic funk out of their body. And now, these, these, all these fat cells that are now just totally clean, your body's like, great, fuel. Remember, fat and carbs, both fuel. They burn the exact same way. So greens, pull the funk out. It is absolutely essential. The greener, the better. Greens, 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 number one. Um, think about the big picture of, of planet Earth. What was the first life? First life was blue-green algae. Before, uh, nothing could grow on the planet because it was too toxic because of acid rain, volcanoes, meteors, and things of that nature. And then all of a sudden, sunlight interacting with water, and poof, algae. That algae somehow sucked up all of this toxicity, and then poof, just somehow recycled it into oxygen. And that was the gateway for all of the life. The same thing is happening in your body. Those toxins are sucked up and then somehow is excreted as oxygen in the bloodstream. What's the most important thing we put we what's the most important nutriment we put in our body? Oxygen. So, I mean, greens are just like this amazing, amazing the thing. Sweet potatoes you mentioned. Are right. It's a big misconception about how fat they are. Well, it's a, it's a, it's a little bit of a starchy food. It's far superior to, pit, pit, to pit, uh, potatoes. Um, but just the point I was making about the greens is when you're having soup, you don't feel like you have to make a salad. Just take a big handful of arugula and just chew it down. You know, the instant salad, boom. I'm a, I really encourage that. Everybody thinks they have to make a salad. It's not like greens taste bad. You don't have to dump all kinds of salad dressing on it. Just It tastes great. Just, and then you're done. And then have your soup. Is the girl's going to do that? Would you add it to your salad? Sure, you could add it to the soup. I personally just like my soup to be really nice, soft, and soupy. And so what I always... What, my my winter routine is just a huge mouthful of arugula and then, <laughs> and then he like, um, the body does really well with uh, with like routine. If you look at many cultures around the world, they eat like the same exact thing nearly nearly every every day. Yeah. Th their their taste their diet does kind of um, shift throughout the throughout the year, like the general law of nature is um, cooked foods better in the winter, raw foods better in the summer. Uh, raw foods are, are cooling for the body, cooked foods are warming. So. Yeah. Kind of take out the no. Is that like nori? Seaweed is awesome. And then I just take that and cut it, and then I just and then I just put yep. the water in the Yep. Seaweed is awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. How, how about the uh, quinoa? 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 Quinoa. It's cool. You know, it's uh Is it a grain or, or it's a grain. It, you gotta moderate the amount seed? of grains that you have in your diet. Um, but a little quinoa is is rad. Couscous is made from wheat. Is yeah. exactly. It's made from wheat. Buckwheat. Yeah. Buckwheat. It's totally different. Are you sure buckwheat? No, I don't think couscous. All couscous is buckwheat. I'm not sure about. I'm not an expert on couscous. So you never have <laughs> grain-related stuff. I have. I have some grains. I have some grains, but uh, I do just massive amounts of plant foods and massive amounts of protein. I eat a yeah. huge amount of eggs, a tiny amount of meat. I do well with dairy, so Fish. nah. You know, I you don't mean, like it or bison. It's... Bison. Yeah, I try to do less and less, but if I do too little, then I just, I, I just, even though I'm eating a massive amount of other high protein foods, I just get extremely thin for whatever reason. But fish, you don't eat it because you don't like it or because of the chemical? Yeah, I just don't really like it. And also, it's hard to find good quality fish in this day and age. I mean, the reality is farm-raised fish ain't, ain't great, and even ocean caught stuff ain't great either anymore. So it's a toss-up. It's not bad. It's hard to say. I mean, certain, uh, I mean, the, the Pacific Ocean is, is a third of the world, and there are certainly places in the Pacific Ocean and other oceans and bodies of water where... Um, it's totally in its pristine, pure state where it's it's fine, but it's it's questionable. It's hard to say. I just instinctively don't feel that gravitated toward fish anyway. Um, 
my my choice is 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 elk. You know, I mean, there's a little hunter gatherer gene in all of us. So. Yeah. What about rice milk? We didn't talk about. Yeah, rice as far as a boxed milk, I would say that's probably the best. And the reason that I prefer rice milk over all others is um, it, it's pretty much fat free. Not that fat free is a good thing, but remember that these fats that are pasteurized and then just boxed. Those go rancid. Those fats go rancid. So if you're having like some kind of boxed milk product, something that is low fat is definitely going to be best. That's why I like rice milk. It has more, yeah. more calories, but maybe that doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, no, it does have. It does. I mean, it's it's yeah. Well, not processed sugar. Um, none of the brands. It's a plain. Yeah. No. Uh, One more protein question before we. Um, is uh, after a workout, is a green, does a green juice have enough protein to count as a protein drink? Like my green stuff? No, my green stuff is a nominal amount of calories. Not, I'm talking about uh, like if, if I go to get a green juice and they make it on the spot with kale and parsley and whatever uh, else. No, no. That's not enough protein. Nominal amounts of protein. Okay. Nominal. Right. I mean, it's great. Again, more greens the better. The most important thing we put in our body. But you're saying I should have a... Because I do like an exercise class for an hour and then I'll have a green juice. But you're saying I'd be better off having a pro, some sort of protein shake? Put some protein in your green drink. Get it all in one. Okay. Mm -hmm. and, okay. And Billy's you can get online, I guess, right? <laughs> it's, it's only online here. Um, it's in a sprinkling of, of stores around the country. Oh, okay. What, what is the website called? Um, Infinity Greens. Com. You you know what the ashram actually gives you a, a bottle of my green drink oh, stuff. Right. To, so can you talk about that a little bit? Your I don't want to brag about my stuff. It's about so. wheat. wheat. Okay. <laughs> yeah, wheat. So wheat, and we we can come back to that maybe at, you know I'll in a little bit. Okay. So wheat. Um, you know it's uh, it's we it's just gotten away from us. Um, the problem with wheat is kind of similar to dairy, is that now. Wheat is in everything. It's in everything. It, all, all of these processed um, crackers, breads, chips, even salad dressings and other sauces, they put wheat flour in there as like a thickener. There is wheat in everything. Okay, fine, a little like wheat bread uh, here and there, like with a meal, is that bad? No. But when you're constantly sending wheat to your system, you become sensitive to that uh, gluten. Gluten is just grain protein. There's gluten in nearly, a, a, well, in most grains. There, uh, quinoa is gluten-free. Uh, buckwheat is gluten-free. Brown rice, of course. Um, Manioc. No. Let me see. Manioc. No. Amaranth millet. Those are gluten-free. So um, oats have some gluten, rye has a little bit of gluten, um, spelt, but wheat has by far the most. So home and, in the morning. Okay. Well, right, it has gluten in there, and gluten can be a little hard to digest. Now, if you're just having one piece of toast and you're not having a trickle of other wheat products in your diet throughout the day, you're probably fine. <laughs> Two slices. If you're having, if you're having like bread, and I mean, the thing is, in, in most people diet. Um, Wheat is just what we subsist on because it's so cheap that people have it in their cereal and then they have like, you know, bread with their lunch and then they have bread with their dinner and just that constant wheat, that constant gluten, your body's like, stop, no more, and you become uh, gluten sensitive. Glu you know, you so if you, I mean, because I, I, I like that idea that it's a toast. Is there another kind of toast? Okay, so here's what I like. Gluten isn't necessarily bad. You just need to have some moderation. I like lower gluten breads. I'll tell you what bread I think is awesome is whole rye. What? Yeah. Right. Now rye bread. Uh, like rye. if you go to the grocery that's store like and it's the, rye bread. That's like it's the, the one thing I would not. I just can't stand it. Like yeah. Okay, but you know what? If you're getting rye bread, like where it's just regular bread at the grocery store, it ain't rye bread. It's, it's like bread. rye flavored bread. Mm, right. right. And it, t I think it tastes terrible. Oh, if you get like rye bread, like real rye bread that is only rye. What is that? What brand? Um, for that. So um, if you go to the natural food store, it's going to most likely be frozen. Okay. Uh, because it's it's very temperature sensitive. It would go bad like that. Um, that's, not, that's not in the sprouted bread section. Or might be. 
Is it? But it's not sprouted. Uh, it could be, but um, I doubt it. I doubt it. I, I think uh, I switched to rye bread because I became gluten sensitive. And again, rye has some gluten in it, but it works great with my system. So I think rye bread is awesome. I do. I really do. So and you can get other gluten-free products where... What do they use as delicious here with the avocado? I mean, I so with the avocado, that's the yeah, bread. That's mono bread. Oh, that's mono bread. That's, yeah. that have, that'll have rye in it, but the difference with mono bread is... is there's, it's a, a, there's one that's all rye. So mon, the mana bread is uh, it's a few different grains, and what they do is they sprout them. What that means is they're soaked in water. They're not ground into a flour. They're just kind of all mushed together and baked. That's why it's so dense, right? It was really dense and really sweet tasting. That's all right. That's all right. It's it's more satisfying, you know. You you have you have a slice of that, and you feel like you've got something. The reason we overdo the reason we overdo uh, wheat flour is it just doesn't really deliver. It's just kind of like eh, you eat a lot, and you're just like, man, did I really eat anything? And you sure did. You got a ton of carbs and a ton of gluten. Where that's gonna screw with your body's chemistry for dang sure. So is seitan so. like bread is like much worse than bread because it's just wheat gluten? I don't know. Seems to work for some people. I can't say I'm an expert on on seitan. Because that's all it is, is wheat gluten. Right. Right. Seems to work for some people. But okay, fine. If you just have like seitan and that's and, and you're not having it like with every single meal, is it gonna mess you up? Probably not. Again, it's just the constant trickle of cheap wheat flour. The constant trickle coming through your system. You know, all, all the bread, crackers, chips, even like I said, salad dressings and other canned food products. And eggs you can have every day. Like. I think eggs are an amazing superfood. You're never going to raise your cholesterol on eggs. I know that they're high in cholesterol. Remember the whole buzz about fat making you fat? Mm -hmm. We went to a low-fat diet. Everybody got fatter. So eggs, that kind of cholesterol is awesome. It yeah. raises your testosterone levels. It, remember, it's saturated fats. It's saturated fats that raise your cholesterol. Eggs have less than one gram of saturated fat. That's nothing. So it's because I have high cholesterol. So, okay. So it's nice to just have the absolutely, like, the absolutely. Like crap, you know, like right. They just don't deliver. Your and body is great. Eggs they don't have the nutrients. All the nutrients are in the yellow. Okay. The, yeah, the, the yellow. egg yolks are like the powerhouse. Yeah. Yeah. I know. That's information. Because I mean, I just don't know. The whole egg the opposite. Yeah. Yeah. The whole egg white business, they're just riding on the coattails of the hypnotic spell that all fats are bad, you know. It's, it's so ridiculous. What, so what what's in an egg white? Well, you're getting protein. Oh, protein. So they're not bad for you, right? They're not bad for you. Egg whites? Yeah. I mean, you know, it, it just protein by itself is kind of acid forming. The yolk is where the B12 I mean, and the magnesium. Right. It's all right. It's all right. You don't like the yolk. No, I, I just got used to eating the egg whites, uh -huh. so I'd be better off just doing scrambled eggs. Did you yes. eat the whole? Did you eat the eggs here? No, um, I'm not allowed to eat eggs here. Oh yeah, the eggs that one day yeah. for breakfast. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you did. So you ate the whole eggs. Yeah. Ha and yeah. how'd it go? Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> eggs from eggs from chickens from battery chickens, which is 99 percent of them. I mean, do you think that there's a difference between the qual from a health perspective? If I would ever go back to eggs. I'm just curious. Because mm -hmm. that's where people get, I mean, that's where eggs are, you know. Eggs mm -hmm. come from chickens that are in battery cages. Mm -hmm. What do you think of the quality of those eggs? I know, it's a tough one. I think that, I'm glad you asked because I think they're total crap. I really do. I but think most people when they go out and eat eggs, that's what they're going to eat. Right. They eat eggs in a restaurant. Right. They eat eggs it's in, true. A piece, in a piece of cake. Any, anywhere. It's Unless true. you buy them at home, yeah. It's, really it's true. And, and so again, I like, to, I like to talk about how we're just wanting to make this shift in our general lifestyle at home when you're out and about is it going to make a difference what you have for a meal or two a week i don't think so you know i mean personally my my tastes have shifted so that when i have low quality eggs i'm just like Lah, i don't even i think they taste totally different and i don't like it truthfully when i go out when i go out with friends you guys i go fed i'm already fed you know maybe i'll take a bar in my pocket or something and i <laughs> yeah, I, everyone, okay, I mean, sure, there are healthy restaurants, and we'll go there, and sometimes, sure, I'm hungry, and I'll just eat a hamburger or whatever, I don't care. Um, I used to be hardcore, 
to where I was, you know, I, even when we would go out, it'd be a little bit of a scene. It was like, what's Billy going to eat? And it was like, truthfully, that was more wear and tear on my soul than just eating the dang thing. So. What about the egg yolk, the color of it? You know how we all like go, oh my God, it's really orange. Yeah, oh, like absolutely. Yeah. Color color is definitely reflective of the quality of an egg. You can, It's it's definitely the scenario that the darker yolks are, are the more nutritive. Color is, is, in most cases, a reflection of the nutritive content, like the darker leafy greens, the darker greens, the darker uh, like sweet potatoes versus regular potatoes. That color is indicative of some kind of nutritive quality, in most cases, not always. But. Right. There's more fat in the egg yolk, but there's more fat in the egg Less than a gram of saturated fat. That ain't nothing. It really isn't much. all the other stuff Absolutely, that's the life force. That's the life force. Eggs are an incredibly nutritive food. You get protein from everything. Yeah. The, the cool thing about egg protein, however, it's, it's, it's the easiest to digest animal protein. Protein is not fuel. And actually, if you have animal protein in your diet, the, ti the time to have it is at the end of the day because digesting animal protein makes you tired. In most cases, most cases. I mean, some people, they're just like the full-on hunter-gatherer, hardcore, and they eat pr protein three meals a day. It's probably wear and tear in the body, and it ain't great. But um, in general, for overall health and longevity and keeping your energy high, less animal protein and have it later in the day because... All protein is doing, whether it's plant or animal, is, is uh, rebuilding the wear and tear that you put on your body during the day. That's what it's doing. So Again, when you have feeling. lunch, you just have a salad without proteins? And uh, preferably. I'm a, I'm a super salad dude in the middle of the day, um, which I like to talk about, kind of an ideal meal sequence of what to do throughout the day. Salad or super salad? Super. super. <laughs> or both. So in, the, so in the morning, what would you start with? Like, what would you have in the um, lunch? Like, what would be the, yeah. the right thing to do? So, I'm a fan of having uh, smaller, more frequent meals. I know here you have three, and it's just, mm -hmm. it's because of the lifestyle, the getting up and then hiking 13 miles, and... And there's just not time to have smaller, more frequent meals. I'm definitely not talking about snacking. That ain't great. You've got to give your digestive system a break in between meals. But I'm a fan of, again, having a smaller meal every few hours. So that would be more like four or five meals. They don't have to necessarily be the same size. I mean, certain meals are larger than others. But Or, or you can call it a snack in the middle of the day or whatever you want. But... Uh, first thing when you wake up in the morning, feet hit the floor, pound water. Your body dries out at night. You haven't been drinking water eight to ten hours. Oxygen's, no, or oxygen's number one, water's number two. Most, two most important things you put in your body. So drink uh, one to two cups of water, just pound it. We're not talking about juice. A little lemon in your water, okay, that's fine. Coconut and then, water. what? Coconut water. Well, see, I like I like uh, the, the water to be just calorie free, just pure hydration. Coconut water is awesome. It can even be a little more hydrating than water. It is just the perfect complex that the body just soaks it right up, where a lot of the water just kind of passes right through. And you know what? Cheers to that. There are so many different qualities of water. Man, talk about the elite. That's what I am really adamant about. I can take the difference Absolutely. So with water, drink the ultra, ultra pure. The best way to get pure water for most of us in this urban culture is uh, to have a reverse osmosis mm -hmm. filter installed in your house or a distiller, which is 10 times the cost. Um, reverse mm -hmm. osmosis filters are pretty darn good. I'm not talking about Brita filters. Those are so yeah. darn mediocre. Um, they just don't... What, what okay, the, the water of? alkalizers, those are mediocre too. They're alkalizing the water, yes, but those, al those water alkalizers don't do anywhere near the filtration of reverse osmosis filters. So what's so, a good brand for uh, that? Uh, oh, there are many. Filter. What you want to do to have a reverse osmosis filter is call any plumber. Any plumber any, every plumber knows what a reverse osmosis filter is. It's, it sounds fancy, but it ain't. It's just a filtration system. And they come in and they it, they come and install it under your sink. It goes under your sink, and then they actually install a second faucet. They install it, but that's your drinking water, and that's great. Those are really great. Are it's they all reverse osmosis? I mean, if I have a, a, a canister mounted below my sink, 
below the counter and then the separate faucet. Do I assume that's reverse osmosis? No. I mean, it could just be a carbon filter, which is better than nothing. Uh -huh. um, with reverse osmosis filters, you gotta you got to have the filter changed every six months. Right. And like a, a service like Culligan, some plumber service, they, they keep track of that. They basically just give you a call and say, hey, it's been six months. We'll come and change your filter. And it costs nothing. It's so great. It's the best investment. The drinking bottled water all the time, that ain't great. That ain't great. That that water that water has been sitting in a water bottle for, for months and months. And plastic, plastic does leach things into the water a little bit. Is it totally toxic to drink it once in a while? No. I mean, sometimes I'm out and about and I just have to buy a bottle of water. But done on a daily basis, that stuff does, that toxic material does slowly accumulate in the body. And so... Um, now, getting getting yeah. water delivered, that's a little different because those are those bottles are filled in that you know filled with spring water and then are delivered. And how long has the water been in that? I mean, it's still questionable. It, it's totally worth getting a good filtration system. Um, so that's h half of it, or seventy percent of it, is the filtration. It's also really helpful to have what a, what's called a water alkalizer, and what that's doing is it's basically just water. Okay, so out in nature, uh, the, best, the best water is pure spring water. Okay, not only is it pure, but here's what, may, here's what takes it from pure to just a whole other level of elite, is that spring water, when it's churning over rocks like this, that churning creates a molecular structure. That's why when spring water evaporates and falls as a snowflake, it's like this beautiful looking thing. If, it, if you just... If it was distilled water or just uh, filtered tap water, if it, if it uh, evaporated and fell, it would just be pellets. So spring water, when it's churning over rocks like that, it creates that structure where it has a charge to it where your body is way more akin to suck it up like coconut water. And I think it's, I think it's worth doing. Um, so the reverse osmosis filter does the filtration. You know, it's just like a second faucet. And it's fine just to drink it straight like that. It's, it's fine. It's, it's great. Um, but uh, a water alkalizer basically just gives it that charge. And one, one that I, I really you like... Is that with all drinking water, the alkalizer? Preferably. <laughs> preferably. Uh, and so a brand I really like, it's called a Vitalizer Plus. It's totally cheesy, and it looks like a blender, and but it's a pitcher. It's it's a two liter pitcher that you fill it up and and you push go, and it, it takes about ten minutes. It alkalizes the water that then you can just put into a glass pitcher or whatever, and then and then it's you're pretty golden. I mean, if you're trying to alkalize water for a family of six, it's hardly impractical. You know, at least do the reverse osmosis thing. Um, but there's, there's amazing technology out there. I'm not aware of all of it. You can get, I'm sure there's a filter out there that does both the reverse osmosis filtration and the alkalization. I just don't, I'm not aware of it. Um, Is there a brand of water that's out and about, you know, that's find everywhere that's most, most recommend, that you recommend the most? Is for if you have to buy bottled water? Yeah. Um, glass bottles. Not really glass bottles. Yep, exactly. I would buy but something. If, you don't have, if you're not anywhere where there's glass bottles. Oh, I don't care. You know, I would just drink plastic. plastic. Yeah. It's you know, it's it's all pretty neat. You know, it's all kind of just right there in a glass bottle. That makes a substantial difference. It, even though it's spring water, it, um, that that charge that um, that alkaline charge does just kind of go away. So. How long have you been super healthy, like, uh, conscious uh, yeah. about this? Um, well, I kind of got into this uh, about 14 years ago. I had a pretty bad injury, and I was able to rebuild my health from scratch with diet and exercise and a whole bunch of other lifestyle details. How old so, are you? How old was I? No, no. Oh, uh, 36. 36? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You look much younger. Yeah, How old are you? 36. Um, I'm 36. Oh, 76? Cool. Yeah. Uh, actually, no, my birthday is in two weeks. I was 77. 77. Um, uh, 
question unrelated to anything we've talked about. When I make vinaigrette, um, I always wonder if I should put raw garlic in it. Is there something about having store in garlic and oil that makes it rancid? Uh, no, garlic kills the heck out of stuff. And so a little garlic here and there can be a good thing. It definitely kills... Stored in, stored in the refrigerator for a few weeks with a vat of vinaigrette is all right? Yeah. So it doesn't go bad or anything? No. Okay. No, no. Raw garlic can be beneficial, but you got to have some moderation with garlic. <laughs> Um, uh, it can make you a little tired and spacey. Mm. Really? <laughs> but uh, but raw garlic does kill stuff. It can be beneficial. You know, back, bacteria in your body, fungus. So, yeah. so we're just we're on, right. We're okay, on, so we're on water. I, I, <laughs> I, pound a, I pound a huge glass of water. Boom! Just get that hydration happening. The body likes hot drinks in the morning. Tea, gotcha. great, oh, yeah. coffee's okay, you know, a cup a day, no big deal. It's important to have some degree of moderation with your caffeine, like under 100 milligrams, one cup of coffee is 100, so that's okay, mm -hmm. um, but like your 16-ounce Starbucks, I mean, that's, that's a lot of caffeine, and sure, it's nice and buzzy, but um, overall, you're going to have less energy because you're cooking your, your adrenals. So here, coming here is a great thing because you kind of just hit the reset button where when you go back to, when you go back to your zone, have, have just one, if you have coffee in your diet, have just one cup and you're going to be like, woo, yeah. and just keep it at that level. Mm -hmm. Keep it there. I mean, okay, on rare occasion, to if you're totally sure. just like spaced in the morning because you partied hardy, then mm -hmm. fine, have a couple cups, but make that a, a rare thing. Tea's awesome, though. If you don't already have caffeine in your diet, just stick with herbal tea, but tea's great. Black tea, green tea, it's all great. Again, moderation. Tea has about 40 milligrams of caffeine in one tea bag, so one or two, you're all right. Um, okay, so hot drinks in the morning. I am a huge fan of smoothies in the morning for a few reasons. It doesn't take any work for your body to digest. Your blender just whips it all down. I like to put my greens in there. I like to balance it out. I like to make my smoothie a meal. We're not just talking about fruit here. The body likes fruit in the morning. The reason being, boom, instant brain fuel, glucose. doesn't take any time to be converted into energy where carbs, fats, it can take even hours to be converted into fuel. So I like to have that, uh, that instant brain food, fruit. And again, I like it to be a balanced meal. So I add some protein. I like to like get what? some... Um, yogurt yogurt's awesome yogurt's awesome I like to add some some fats so yogurt would would be that too I like almond butter almond butter is totally awesome in smoothies so here's here's my recipe that I have every morning I uh, I throw a whole big handful of strawberries in there everything is organic um, I put a heaping tablespoon of whole yogurt no low fat BS, and, and or a heaping tablespoon of raw almond butter. And I... How long put, does that stay good in the fridge, raw almond butter? Oh, forever. Forever. Yeah, okay. in the fridge, you're golden. Okay. But, be, but go for raw almond butter, because roasted, roasted nut butters, those go rancid, and they ain't great. Where raw <laughs> almonds, raw almond butter, that, that's an elite food. Mm -hmm. Awesome protein fat. Awesome protein. You're never going <coughs> to... Raw, raw almond butter is awesome. Mm -hmm. You can eventually overdo it, and then you're, you know, you, you got to... You can eventually overdo nuts and seeds. It does, they're not going to really make you fat or anything, but um, it just can kind of gum up your digestion a little bit. So that's it? Just almond butter no. yogurt? And no. <laughs> See, I, I like it to be a meal where I want some nutrients in there. Remember, what's the most important food we put in our body? Green. Greens. I want it to be pink, though. What? I want it to be pink. <laughs> Just put Pepto-Bismol in it. Okay, Mom. Genius! <laughs> I love it. Raspberries? That's what we do. So I, I, uh, I put a ton of my greens in there, green. and I just whip it all up. Boom, you're getting your greens and nutrients. You're getting protein. So you put fats. greens? What kind of greens do you put? Well, I don't like to brag about my stuff. Oh, your stuff. Greens. Okay. But oh, your not, stuff. Not, okay. Not, you're not talking about spinach. You can. You can. I personally don't. Okay. I personally don't. So, you, but you certainly can. Mm -hmm. Kale, 
makes it taste a little funky. It mm. makes it a little chunky. I personally like to be really creamy, yeah, smooth. So just that yogurt, strawberries, uh, <laughs> raw almond butter, and your greens. Yeah. And that's, what if that's, you do that's, with just strawberries or yogurt? Yogurt and totally, almond butter? Totally, totally. Of course. It'd be totally. <laughs> but, but, I mean, you're not getting, like, substantial yep. nutritive. I mean, for me, it's a meal. It's not just a quick little smoothie and then breakfast again. That's, that's, that's sort of my first meal. Boom, I have my water, a cup of tea, and then 20, 30 minutes later, my first meal, which is a smoothie. Easy to digest, nutritive, protein, fat, well-rounded. Everything's in there. Natural sugar, instant glucose, protein, fat, boom, well-rounded. And then I'm a fan of eggs in the morning. So I do eggs and, and I cook them uh, low temperature in butter and uh, you can again you can use um, coconut oil if you don't want to do butter and then I do uh, I'm a whole rye bread person not rye flavored. It's so, so you're okay with proteins in the morning? Uh, you said it's better to have proteins at the end. Well, eggs eggs are sort of the protein exception where they're out of all the animal proteins by far the easiest to digest. Like I definitely don't recommend bacon and sausage in the morning for the obvious reason that you're getting tons of animal lard and also it's a, it's hard to digest animal protein. It can make you tired. Mm -hmm. and they're filled with nitrites. And they're shisey. Absolutely. So um, other other great breakfast foods if you don't do eggs I think oatmeal is totally cool round it out put some mm -hmm. get some protein fats in there with raw nuts and seeds add a scoop of uh, coconut, coconut oil sweeten it with an elite sweetener which I consider to be honey or maple syrup not agave yeah Agave is kind of mediocre. I put it a shade above processed sugar. But the okay. whole thing, when it came out 10 years ago, it somehow being a healthy sweetener, no, 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 no. It's a processed sweetener. Mm -hmm. Out of all the processed sweeteners, I say honey is the elite. But we're talking good quality honey. I mean, it's the same as like regular eggs and organic cage-free eggs, that you got to get the elite stuff, which is raw. Raw, unfiltered honey is awesome. It is high glycemic, it is sugar, it requires some moderation, but it's totally nutritive and immune boosting and all things of that nature. What? Yeah, absolutely. One more time, thank you. Um, I don't know, I can't say. But Manuka I know is a pretty elite brand, so probably. All good quality honey is raw. Then, then uh, lunch? Lunch is, uh, okay, so, um, yeah, I, I, have, um, I have my eggs and rye bread, um, and then... With your shake? With the shake? You do the... No, either or, right? Either or. What? Wait, what? Either or. You have the smoothie or the eggs? Or no, I do, but again, I, I do both. Oh, that's your... Because I do, I do about five meals a day. Okay, and they're so just this is meal smaller. two. Okay, this is meal one. So, meal yeah, okay. water, tea, Aww. smoothie... Wow. Eggs. And then oatmeal. These are smaller meals. Or oatmeal, right? The oatmeal is... Or oatmeal. Okay. Or oatmeal. I don't know. I mean, you could do six meals a day, just depending on your lifestyle, your metabolism, whatever. So, middle of the day, soups or salads. This time of year, I'm all about soups. I love soup. I think it's freaking genius. You make your own. You throw your favorite vegetables in there, or do the recipe that we give you here. And the way... It's, it's a whole nother level, and... Um, what you can do, and the great thing about it is also you make a you make a big pot and it's you're good all week. You just scoop a few cups out, heat it up, and you're and you're golden. You can take it with you to work in a thermos, and and then you can sort of supplement. You can add it. You can add some more protein fat by having a you know some raw nuts and seeds with it. Or um, I mean, you can put you can put a little meat in it if you wish. I personally don't. Um, an avocado, so. Heat it up, slice up, slice up an avocado, and kind of throw it on top. Goes great in there. Totally great. Um, well, yes. You like okay. So um, salty, crunchy goes really well with uh, soup. So like mm -hmm. flaxseed crackers. Oh, okay. Yep. Seedlander, you know that brand? No. Okay. Yeah, flaxy Dr. Cracker. Cracker. That's fine. Flax seeds are, are an elite cracker. So, hey, you know what? We, you know what? Since, since we've uh, become a little bit smaller of a group, I want to give Rosemary space.
to okay, set yeah. the table. So can we sit over here in yeah, the living yeah. room? And we'll just go for about another 10 minutes or so. Okay. Call it good. Is that for you? Um, that was just if you want me to email the, uh, the lecture to you. I can email you the recording. So, Right. Okay, so middle of the day. Um, middle of the day, just like plant foods. Plant foods. Um, grains are cool. You know, grains in the middle of the day do really well. If you're going to have grains in your diet, that's the time to have it. Because that's when you're that's when you're burning fuel. Grains at night, grains at night. You know that's fuel. You don't really need grains right before. You need some carbs, obviously, but having a having a big thing of brown rice or quinoa. I mean, a little brown rice, a little quinoa with lots of plant foods is awesome. But again, some people's lifestyle they need lots of carbs. Like if you're trekking these hills, like you are here. Okay, fine. Have have lots of brown rice, quinoa, whatever it may be. Um, and then dinner, that's where, for me, it's all about protein and just plant foods. Maybe soup. I'm a creature of habit. Um, and then a late night snack, if you want something before you go to bed. An awesome late night food is yogurt. The body responds really well to dairy at night. How about cheeses? Like, cheese is okay. Favor, like goat cheese versus. Goat like, cheese is awesome. Goat cheese is. Do they consider high cheese? protein? Like, if you have no, a not really. the greens, it's, it's okay, right? Yeah. 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 Cheese is totally cool, but it re does require some moderation. Cheese is lactose free. For the moment, I mean, you can't call it lactose free, but nominal amounts of lactose. Goat cheese. Both. Really? Goat cheese and dairy cheese. All, all the lactose, all the milk sugar is, is eaten up by the culturing process. Does cheese have rennet in it? It's something I've heard about and I'm not... Yes, yes, which is some kind of animal byproduct you can get you, if you look for vegetarian cheese. Mm -hmm. I so. think most people know that it has yeah. you know, stomach scrapings in it. <laughs> yeah. Just putting it out there. It's true, but like good quality cheese, it'll say vegetarian. So uh, my, my favorite dessert, kind of like a later night small meal, is uh, whole yogurt and just stir it up with honey. Put some nuts and seeds in there, yogurt and honey. There's go a Greek restaurant in Palo Alto that does that amazing, it's really thick, it's, it's one of the my Greek best yogurt. desserts ever, ever with mm -hmm. honey and all that stuff. Yeah. What about, what do you think of dark chocolate at night or in general? Well, chocolate's a stimulant. If just a, a couple squares of dark chocolate, is that going to keep you up? Probably not. Probably not. But if people want to eat like half a chocolate bar, man, I'm like, whoa, I get high. Uh -huh. So the chocolate's cool, you know. I, I personally go for the elite chocolate, and I go for like the super dark, where it's like 88%. <laughs> and and a, couple, a couple squares, and you are getting like... A ton of cacao where you're gonna feel really satisfied. It's when you eat one of those bars, like a Hershey's bar, where you eat like nearly the whole thing, and it's like, you know, you get a ton of sugar. But if it's anything more than like 72%, then it's not sweet, so it doesn't really satisfy your sweet tooth. Or, you know what? I'm glad you said sweet tooth. And it is important to keep your sweet tooth satisfied so that when you're at a dinner party and there's this whole thing of cookies and cupcakes and things of that nature, you don't just fall into a whole landslide of overdoing it. It is really important to keep your sweet tooth satisfied with the elite natural sugars. Everybody needs sugar because, again, instant glucose for the brain. You have a natural sweet tooth. Keep it satisfied with the elite. That would be uh, fruit. Fruit and then, and then honey, maple syrup, things of that nature. But... Uh, Having, having a few pieces of fruit in your diet, again, that's why a smoothie in the morning is totally genius. Having, having a, a piece of fruit sometime in the middle of the day is awesome. And then honey at night, that keeps your sweet tooth happy with some yogurt. Because um, if you don't, if you don't, when processed sugar is around, you just totally overdo it. And processed sugar is addictive. It does have a chemically addictive process. And how much fruit is too much fruit? Well, I eat a lot of fruit. Uh huh. Again, it's different for everybody. Uh, personally, I like to go for what's called the low glycemic. 
sugar. Berries. Natural. Yeah, berries, exactly. Berries are berries are the elite sugar. Above all else, berries. Yeah. Berries are the most prone to absorbing pesticides, though. I, I always go organic. Yeah. I always go organic. Did you see the movie Forks Over Knives? No. It's great. It's yeah? Us. Yeah. Made my husband and son a vegetarian. Oh, there. really? And they really, they, the, they do chart over chart. It's kind of boring, the movie, but it obviously gets the message across because it's made, it's converted multiple pieces. It's about the China study. The two, you know, leading doctors, one from Cornell and one from, I don't think, from Harvard, maybe. And the, their whole, um, Thesis really? is that animal protein is the source of cancer X Y Z, and that you need a minimal amount of protein in your diet. Mm -hmm. Also, is the other thing. So I just wondered if you saw it. Yeah, see, that's the thing is there are many diets out there where they say, "Ta-da! Finally, this is the diet." It's tough because again, everybody everybody uh, mm -hmm. is just has different nutritive right. needs. I mean, imagine if an Eskimo tried to subsist on on brown rice and tofu. They wouldn't do well, you know. Again, their bodies have adapted to whale blubber over, you know. I mean, their diet's like whale muzzles and fermented eagles. It's crazy. It's totally crazy. Um, but they do really well with it. I mean, for the harsh climate they live in, they actually um, live a pretty long time. So. so why do people say that quinoa is, is protein? Is, is not well, out of all the grains. Yeah. I mean, it's it's still primarily carbohydrates, yeah. but out of all the grains, it's one of the highest in protein. Quinoa is pretty rad stuff. Like I would consider quinoa and brown rice to sort of be the the best. If you were gonna have to eat, if, if I wanted to eat pasta, obviously I understand that white pasta is gonna be bad, but well, pasta's all right. Well, I'm I'm asking. So is. Rice pasta, quinoa pasta, whole wheat. I mean, are any better, or any better, or any worse than? Any well, I mean, the advantage you can get brown rice pasta, you can get quinoa pasta. The advantages is they're gluten free. They're more digestible, but they don't really have like substantial nutrient content. Here's the what. Here's how I look at grains. Use grains as like a way to get really nutritive foods down. Again, it would be depressing if we just ate a whole plate of vegetables. It really exactly. would. Yeah. The body likes like steamed grains, but the thing to do is to kind of mix the two together. I really like steaming your grains and then toward the end of the toward the end of it where the, most of the water is absorbed, throw a handful of spinach in there. Squeeze a lemon in there. Pour a whole bunch of olive oil in there. Put sprinkle some curry spices in there. Stir it all up. Thank you. Totally awesome. So, on your website, you can order it. Thank you. You're welcome. Was very nice. Yeah. One other thing I like to just talk about that is that is not diet. So you know how I told you I wanted to give you like the key pointers. So we, we covered the diet. I feel pretty well anyway. What's the best form of exercise you can possibly do for yourself, hands down? Nothing comes even close. Holding your breath. Nailed it. What what is it? Hiking. I was joking. Hiking. What is it? Hiking. Oh, hiking. Hiking. Really? Why? It's the exercise that the body evolved with over 200,000 years, is hunter-gatherers. The body is built to hike 10 to 30 miles a day with nominal wear and tear. You know, when you're living, you guys are hiking 10 to 14 miles a day here, 65 miles this week, and you don't even have a rest day, and you do fine. Now, part of that is because you have the incredible support system of massage, the pool, and the diet, and all these other factors. But look at what you can do. It's, it's mind-blowing. People just don't even know. People don't know that the body can do that. And it is the perfect amount of wear and tear so that when you're doing that on a regular basis, your body becomes so sturdy and strong and lean. And that's what makes it the best exercise is that it is cardio and load-bearing all in one. People don't think of it as load bearing, but you're lugging your body weight up and down thousands of vertical feet, and you are working the biggest muscles in your body. When you build, when you build solid muscles, that raises your metabolism way more than cardio, and it's it's sustained. It's well, sustained. That is cardio. So, so it's not considered cardio the hiking. It's both. It's both. two and one. It's two and one. The cardio and strength is that the other. Yep, it's half and half. It does both. 
It does both, and I'll tell you, if you're if you're a dude and you want to put on more weight and become even sturdier, throw some water bottles in your pack. Um, or, even better, I'll tell you the best weight, exercise you could ever imagine. <laughs> the best exercise that gets everything strong, head to toe. Find a steep hill, carry some heavy weights, and just do sets. Up, down, up, down. That's it. That does everything. It does your biceps, it does your triceps, your shoulders, your neck, your so back. A stair climb. I mean, I live in Manhattan. We don't have hills. Right, I know. So Take the stairs. Escalators are for lazy people. So, no, but so I, I used to climb... I lived on the 30th floor. I would climb up 30 steps and take the elevator down and do it over and over. Totally awesome, dude. But I felt like I was breathing in this dust from the stairway. I know. There's like, uh, there's something bad that comes with everybody. See, I know. That's why, that's why, you guys, this is the elite exercise. You are getting the most bang for your buck. You're hiking trails. You're breathing the fresh air and you're getting Um, sunshine all in If you break it down, it comes actually like $2 a a step. Um, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. near, uh, mountains. (laughs) Great. Yeah, I about this yeah. Concept of nutrient. Yeah, this is important. Go ahead. I, nice I, I took vitamins for like 15 years and I've stopped now. Right, good for you. And I try, was trying some of your stuff, but then I was worried because this idea that supplements then start it starts to make your body not use other nutrients when they come in. I am so glad you brought that up because this is a this is a become a problem. Multivitamins have been in the human diet for the last 15 years, and now people are becoming very sensitive to these things. The whole notion of the silver bullet and one pill, 100% of every nutrient, and da da da, those nutrients don't come from plants. They don't come from foods. They come from mines. They're artificial. They're synthetic. And now what's happening is that a little bit of that is constantly accumulating in the body. People are getting kidney stones. That's a problem. That's a problem. There's that, that's that's. Did you know that multivitamins, all of them, are created by pharmaceutical companies? Not to say that all, all pharmaceuticals are bad. They definitely play an important role for people who are dealing with serious traumas for some reason. But it's totally ridiculous. You, to get 100% of every nutrient, you would have to eat like this huge table of food. <laughs> it's ridiculous. And, and many, you don't need 100 The whole thing, 100%, are you kidding me? You need... Like, okay, so there's an ideal number of milligrams, but um, there, are, there are diets in the world where they don't get any of a particular nutrient. And they live, you know, their longevity is amazing. It's different body types. And also, there are seasons, your, your, your nu- nutritive needs change throughout the seasons where some nutrients you just don't even really need. And so that's ridiculous. That's absolutely ridiculous. So how do your grains, so what is, what do you, what do the greens do versus? Oh, well, see, my formula is just all pure plant foods that have been in the human diet for thousands of years. These are foods that the body has become well adapted to. And I'm not saying, my stuff so is definitely. Like, is it like concentrated food as opposed to? No, um, it? so it's, it's, um, it's blue green algae, um, spirulina, it's, it's a few, chlorella, uh, klamath lake algae. Algae have been in the diet for thousands of years all over the world. Awesome, awesome food. I mean, they're, they're virtually non-caloric, but they're, they're basically just like a pure protein concentrate. And then it's a blend of, of herbs, stinging nettles, horsetail, burdock root. These foods have been in the diet for, again, thousands of years. Um, and they're just, they're just dry. They're just dehydrated and then ground into a fine powder that then you can just mix in a drink, a smoothie, or shake up in your water bottle. And I mean that's it. It's not. It's not a meal. I mean they're pretty much uh, non-caloric. This I just these these herbs are chosen just for their nutritive content or their medicinal content. What if you take them just a couple times a week? I mean, what's the difference? What well, I mean, uh, personally, I uh, I don't want to come off as trying to like brag. No, we don't. We're not. Okay. I'm not worried about that. I'm really. Yeah. Wor- I'm really I mean, personally, I just I just have it every morning. I mean, I. Value. I, well, okay, so the nutshell version of what I'm trying to do with this formula, what's the most important food we put in our body? Greens of all kinds. Kale, arugula, chard, spinach, basil, parsley, cilantro, all of it. What's the most green food on the planet? Blue-green algae. Blue-green algae has the most chlorophyll content of any food. What I'm trying to do is use that chlorophyll to pull toxic funk out of the body, and then I'm using this, this blend of different herbs and botanicals and, and uh, berry extracts to put the nutrients back in. Pull the funk out, put the good in. That's the whole objective. 
You know what? I am so glad you brought that up. That has become a problem. Where do we get our vitamin D? We all know. Right. The sun. The, 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 the you can't beat it. Don't work, right? What? The supplements, they don't work. You have to get the No, supplement. they really don't. They, they don't work? No, it's ridiculous. You don't, no, you really don't. You really don't absorb any of it. Unless there's become some, unless there's some new technology in the last year, I don't know. But I have looked into it extensively, and the amount of vitamin D that you absorb from these supplements is totally nominal. And the other, the other byproduct that's in those supplements does have some toxic value. Taking, okay, so if you have an injury of some kind, like a torn ligament or something, or a, or a broken bone, does it make sense to take a particular, um, you know, like a calcium for a period, or, or uh, shoot, what do you call it for um, injured? Uh, well, anyway, um, it, it may make sense to take something for a while. But it's not good to take it forever because it, it these these vitamins and minerals and supplements recovery, don't so. come, right recovery they don't come from foods, yeah. and they accumulate in the body. The body doesn't really know how to process the them. We're not all the time, well, okay, you don't have to have sunshine every day. You really don't. You really don't. I mean, sunshine even a few days a week is enough. Look at look at the Eskimos. They they go months without any sunshine. And their frames are so sturdy. That's actually another, I want to talk about hiking a little more, but okay. first about sun. Okay, so vitam, the vitamin D that you get from sun is uncomparable. <laughs> you don't have to get sun every day. What you need is just small amounts of the right sun, and we're not getting it. Why are we not getting the, why are we not getting the sunshine we need? Not, be, not just because we're inside. Sunscreen. All of these skincare products, all the lotion skincare products of all kinds, we're smearing all over ourselves every day. All of them have SPF now, thinking that's a good thing. Fine, use SPF wisely if you're out at the beach in the middle of the day and you're in your bathing suit. Fine, put it on. You don't want to get sunburned in the middle of the day. But do you need it on your skin all day every day? No, 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 no. Because here's how it works. The sun interacts with tannins in the skin which then over the next 24 hours is absorbed through the skin into the bloodstream that makes your, it interacts with calcium in your diet to make nice and sturdy bones. That's, I mean, this is your frame. You've got to have a sturdy frame. That's a huge part of your longevity. And so the thing to do is to get the right sunshine, which is earlier in the day and later in the day when the sun is lower on the horizon. It's traveling through the atmosphere at an angle, and it's being, uh, it's, the atmosphere is, atmosphere is filtering out harmful rays. Impossible to get sunburned an hour before sunset or an hour after, up, up to an hour after sunrise. Impossible. You won't get sunburned no matter how pale or white you are. You are getting the essential vitamin D you need. And I think it's also ideal to, to not just go in the shower and constantly be putting soap on your arms and legs. You know, fine, use soap where you need it. But, do you, I mean, if you don't use soap on your arms, are you really going to stink? No. Um, the, reason, the reason you don't want to be too adept at doing this all the time is it takes about 24 hours for that vitamin D to absorb. Right, your really? Yeah. So you're washing it off? <laughs> well, not, not just, not just with, with hot water. It's constantly using solvents and soaps and things of that nature. Does sunscreen block the absorption of Absolutely. vitamin D? Um, it, it, yes, exactly. That's the problem. Use it when you need it. Personally, my favorite form of sunscreen, long white shirt, hat. Yeah. Yeah, it's all those chemicals you're putting into your body. It's true. Okay, fine, if you're at the beach, you do it choice. here and there. But all these skincare products we're putting on ourselves it's every day. How many minutes a day? I, I guess we don't need that many minutes. Ten? Ten? That's what I heard. Awesome. Awesome. Totally awesome. Um, Get out in the morning, go for a walk. Get your fresh air, walk up a hill. Get your is get your heart pumping. Window, uh, the same thing, or does that change things? Like, uh, no, um, you don't. You don't get those rays coming through glass. Through plastic, yes. Glass, no. Hmm. I have a vitamin-related question. Flaxseed oil capsules. Yeah. Um, which I take to augment my omega threes. Is that considered a vitamin? Is that well, I mean, it's not a vitamin. It's it's a it's an essential fatty acid. Which sure you can call it a, a nutrient if you want, but. Um, it's cool, you know, not everybody actually needs that, um, so many essential fatty acids in their diet. There are cultures that don't have any fish or any flax seeds, and they seem to do fine. 
Um, but flax seeds are an elite food, for sure. Flax seed oil is cool. It is. I personally, uh, I, I really hardly have any essential fatty. I mean, you get, you get essential fatty acids at least a little bit from pretty much all raw plant fats. I Dude, just, you know, like, you hear this, like the balance oil. of omega-3 and omega-6 and the American diet or whatever, the Western, we have way too much omega-6 and then we're off balance. And so it doesn't, the, this balance doesn't need to be as precision-tuned as it sounds. The whole nutshell version of what we're trying to do, I mean, we're constantly trying to, like, fine-tune these things between multivitamins and, and, and pasta and other wheat products. And, and the whole thing is just more plant foods and more high quality fats. That's and protein takes care of itself. You don't really have to measure how much protein you have in your diet. Okay, fine if you're a vegetarian or a vegan or extremely low animal protein. I do think it's a good idea to supplement with some kind of good quality protein powder. But does it need to be like these exact numbers? No, it really doesn't. Between the hummus and the nuts and seeds, I feel like I'm getting enough. Well, there. But, but I don't. But I, that's just a gut feeling. That's not based on any measure of test I've taken with my mm-hmm. deposition. Yeah. Um. And tofu. Sure. Okay. okay. I mean, it looks like you're doing a good job to me. So if you're, if you're, if you people can't are see trying the breast to breast side from the tofu, yes. they're hidden. <laughs> For, pe- for for dudes who are trying to like build muscle mass, it ain't just about having a lot of protein. It's about doing load-bearing exercise. Load-bearing exercise. That's what it is. That's the one right there. And hiking is great. Hiking is that very thing. So, with the fresh vitamins, I mean, vitamin C seems to be something that, like, just permeates everyone's life. Yes, and, yes. I mean, if you have a cold, you know, you take a vitamin C supplement, that's like, you think that works? Or it, you think it's it definitely good? helps. Vi- vitamin C, I would consider actually to be the most important out of all the nutrients we put in our body. It's the backbone of your immune system. You know, we wouldn't last very long without it. What do you and, think of emergency? Oh, it's such crap. It's ridiculous. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, emergency and, and most vitamin C products are, are ascorbic acid. Ascorbic acid doesn't come from food. Well, it comes from uh, what's called hydrolyzed corn protein, and it doesn't. It doesn't. Sound good. No, no. It's. I mean, I, I put it neck and neck with with multivitamins. Multivitamins don't come from food either. Um, ascorbic acid will it boost your immune system. Yes, it will. But it's not something you should take every day. Oh, interesting. Definitely not something you should take every day. But I am a fan of, of massive amounts of vitamin C. It's definitely had a huge influence on my health. Huge. I used to get sick all the time. I'm a thin dude, and I'm outside all day. The two most important things for not getting sick, yeah. maintaining a healthy body temperature and vitamin C. Those are the two things right there. Because I was cold all the time, I got sick really easy. As soon as I started supplementing with massive amounts of vitamin C, yeah. I never got sick. I haven't been sick in years. Do you do that now? Yes. You have that through, like, strawberries and blueberries. Well, again, I like to brag about my stuff, but I do take my vitamin C formula. You should hit that hard this week. It's up there in the tea cabinet. What? What? Uh, Shoot, that's... I have not taken... Yeah, yeah, what you can do is just... Is it a tablet? No, it's a powder. It's a powder. Yeah. Um, What's in it? So it's berry extracts. Berry. Have you heard of camu camu berry? No. Acerola berry, yama berry. Mm-hmm. So they're just berry extracts. High vitamin C fruits where um, they're food. Mm-hmm. They're food. They're plant foods. These are foods that have always been in the diet. And um, oranges are great. You know, there, there are plenty of high vitamin C yeah. foods out there, but I'm, yeah. I'm for going, I, I mean, I go for like major milligrams yeah. myself. Yeah. Again, I'm outside a lot and I get yeah. cold easy. Yeah. Even though I have tons of hot soup and ginger and all kinds of warming foods, I, I get cold really easy. I just do. It's my body's chemistry. I do great in hot climates. So. I have two, two more questions, um, but I'm willing to take turns. Uh, the, uh, you talked about the nut milks and the, uh, the fat in the nut milks and the fat in roasted peanut butter going rancid. What does that mean? How, how does that affect our health? So, okay, unsaturated fats, 
these are, these are, again, fats that are a liquid at room temperature. They don't become a solid until they're really cold. Um, when, when they're heated above a certain temperature, they basically just break apart on the, on the molecular level. It produces what are called free radicals. We've heard the term free radicals. You get too much exposure to the sun, and, and, and then the big, one is, the big one is fried food. And so you're getting free radicals are basically just these free electrons that are zipping around and doing this. And when you're getting them inside your body through your diet, they just kind of do this wear and tear. They just create inflammation and break stuff down. And the most sensitive thing to that is your thyroid. Your thyroid is like your body's um, metabolic gauge. So you interfere with this, and metabolism just kind of goes... Can you take, are there tests to do to you on your, for your thyroid function? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. What is that? What is that called? I don't know. I ain't no expert on that. It's a blood test. Hypo? Yeah. Low thyroid? Um, coconut. Coconut number one. Coconut, raw coconut. Like raw coconut oil. Raw coconut oil will boost the heck out of your thyroid. Oh, great. Yep. Uh, so cold pressed coconut oil or fresh Thai coconuts that you can get from natural food stores, they are thyroid boosters big time. Sorry, I missed the Lark session on coconut, coconut, coconut oil also. Hmm? Coconut oil as well. Yep. I missed the session on coconut, but it's the coconut flesh versus the coconut. Um, it's the water. coconut fat. The coconut fat. The coconut fat. The coconut okay. fat. Okay, the coconut water doesn't have fats. And no, it's just pure sugar. Like calories, it's just sugar. Yeah. Okay, and the coconut um, flesh is, is fatty. Yes. Right. Yeah. The flesh, even the young coconuts? Yep, it's fat. Oh, the white stuff. Pure fat. It's awesome fat. You will never make yourself fat on raw coconut. Impossible. Love Even if you eat, like, tons of them? Even if you eat tons of them, you're never going to make yourself fat on coconut. Can't do it. Law of nature. You can raise your cholesterol. That's why it requires some moderation. But are a couple coconuts a day going to raise your, or a couple tablespoons of coconut oil going to raise your metabolism? No. no. Coconut milk is pretty cool. It's pretty good for you. Yeah. So yeah. Is that what you're, for, what you're I think that coconut oil. Well. Not coconut milk. You're talking about the actual flesh. The actual yeah, flesh. flesh. Or coconut oil. Mm -hmm. Cold, cold. It has to be raw. What about the coconut? Has to be raw. That you can actually eat. Yep. That's like in the, in the in, in the coconut. No, no, no. I mean, they sell at health food stores raw coconut. Oh. And it's in a glass jar. It's absolutely delicious. Oh, okay, yeah. Any any raw coconut okay. is high in what's called lauric acid. And lauric acid is a thyroid stimulator. Okay. That's why if you're a if you're a skinny dude and you're trying to put mass on, don't eat don't eat raw coconut. Okay, it doesn't work for you. No. Um, B12. Um, that's one thing I I think I should take a supplement for because it doesn't. B12 is a supplement where it's you ain't gonna hurt yourself on, on synthetic B12. You, it's not Why gonna. Why is that different? What? Why is that different than a multivitamin? Well, there there are some vitamins and minerals where you're not well. Minerals not so much, but there are a few vitamins where you're not gonna hurt yourself in in a supplemented form, even though they aren't from foods. B12 is one of those where you're you're all right. You're all right. You're, all right. you're not gonna. But you have to take massive amounts of this synthetic B12 to really get any. I mean, the amount that you absorb is nominal. Where do you find B12 in vegetables? Do you mm, that's it's the thing. Much to well, it's eggs are awesome. Eggs and meat. Yep. Do you see benefits in cheese? Well, um, I mean, I wouldn't consider it to be like a medicinal food, but a good. Like a good quality cheese. I mean, it's it's uh, some decent fat and protein, but you got it requires some moderation just because uh, cheese too much cheese is constipating, and also um, saturated fat from dairy requires some moderation too. But we were talking earlier about how dairy fat is is actually an, an elite saturated fat. That it's important to have good quality unsaturated fats, like like olive oil, and then also elite saturated fats, which I consider the two or the three to be uh, coconut, dairy, and macadamia nuts, and other nuts and seeds, too. But, uh, yeah. Have you ever worked with someone who didn't have a cold? Yes. Yeah, I do. Uh, 
Do you ever advise anyone who didn't have a colon so they're not getting vitamin K? Ooh, yeah, I can't say I'm an expert on that. I wish I could. Okay. Yeah. Um, how do we go out in the world and avoid all these like sugars? <laughs> just have cake. That's what I'm going to do. Like, when this is over, I'm just going to go home and have when cake. When he entered the van at, at Hotel Rocks, he said, is this the bus going to the, tr the Cheesecake Factory? And you know what? He's been loved ever since. Brilliant. Okay, what did I miss? So much you can yeah. <laughs> I want to know this everything. So I recorded the whole thing for you. Oh, you did? You really good. Yes. Wow, we went for an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. 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 An hour and 40 minutes. We are curious. Okay. I want to listen to the whole thing. Well, he's going to email it to us. Yeah. So I gave you my If you write it down. I, I, gave, I gave it to you. It's a little chicken it was scratch. It was a I have a couple questions that I thought of during my massage, though. Oh, good. You might have already gone over some of them. You said for animal yeah. proteins, because I eat like oh, egg whites yeah. and eggs and things like that. How do you, and you said to only use the quality stuff. How do you know, like, when you're shopping, I know what the quality stuff is? Some of these are really hard to read, but oh, that's okay. Can you read okay. mine? Nina Heller at earthlink.net. Lisa for animal. Uh, well, let me fix mine. Oh, yeah, oh. The bottom one is like, hard to read. Like, like, is it or is organic? If, it, if it says organic, is that good enough? Or like, well, it's oh, definitely it's better. Can you read the second one? I'm gonna, I'm gonna um, fix my But it's better there. than nothing. But how, like, what's like the best stuff? Yeah, where do you get the highest? Like, where do you quality? like? Where what kind of butter should you buy? Or? I with animal products in particular, I only go for the elite of the elite. Right. So what is at that? the very least organic? Oh, but this is still gonna have. But like, oh, because a lot of organic sometimes isn't. Right. I mean, that is a reality in this day and age that there are so many loopholes in the whole USDA thing where it's oh, so much of that so stuff. I mean, if I'm buying my <laughs> eggs, if I'm if I'm buying my eggs from the farmers market in Brentwood, is that those farmers market stuff is pretty darn good. Okay. So pretty farmers darn good. Market, really farmers so markets are awesome. I mean, personally, I I shop at Whole Foods. So that's it's yeah. convenient. It's near my house. So if they if they sell the eggs at Whole Foods for those. No, I mean there there are definitely various levels of quality. I mean I've tried I've tried all the different eggs, and so I have the one that I like the most. Which is what? They're actually not even organic. They're grown organic, or they're the chickens are raised organically. But for a, for an egg to be certified organic, the grains that they're feeding the chickens have to be organic. Oh, right. So yeah. That's the, so which brand do you like? Exist. I, you know, I don't even know the name. Oh. I can I can look it up and email but they, it to you. Do they okay. exist, the ones with the grains, organic grains that are fed to the chicken? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, sorry. But what does it have to say for that? Well, it has to be, it has to say certified Certified, organic. certified organic. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. What about if you're going to eat, which I don't do very often, what if you're going to eat chicken? Chicken's all right. You know, cheap protein. It's fair. It's not really a nutritive food otherwise. But is there like a type of... Yeah, with, again, with animal products, I always go for the, the most elite, unquestionably. But I just don't know what you mean by elite. Oh, like, I don't uh, know how to I'm determine. Sorry. I'm and, sorry. I, like, I look for all that stuff. Like, right. when I'm in the grocery store, okay. I don't know how to determine oh, what's okay. the elite sorry. or the elite. Yeah. <laughs> he's, been, he's been working it without any food for an hour and 45 minutes. No, I'm cool. Okay. Um, organic. Just organic? Yeah. You know, and I, I also, I mean, I discern by organic, cage-free, pasture-raised. There are some loopholes in that, too. It's, it's but, hard. But don't be fooled, because cage-free could mean that they're in a factory. It's tomorrow, true. And there are thousands of them living in each other's shit. Yeah. Well, like, it's true. Horizon gets an organic label, but I read some story about Horizon Farms. Yeah. And, like, you shouldn't. Would See, that's, still a factory. that's why I tried them all. That's why I just try all the different eggs, and I can absolutely tell which ones are the best quality. Well, half of it is by the color of the yolk. The the best quality eggs are like a really dark orange. How about this? If you open a package of eggs and all the eggs are different sizes, that's yep. probably a good sign. Yep, it's true. Yeah, the eggs that I can get at my local co-op, that's the, that's the very thing. Different They're all different. Sizes. Yes, different colors, different sizes. Oh, they should be. Like Talk that. about animal protein that you actually think is... Quality, or do you not think that animal protein is? Bison. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do uh, a little bit of bison. 
you know, with with uh, animal protein, we were talking well, about how um, it's important to have like good quality fats. With animal protein, it's important to go for the leaner stuff because like animal lard that you would get from chicken, pork, beef, that's the kind of saturated fat that can actually jack the heck out of your cholesterol. That's why in the last 20 years, that's part of the reason heart disease has become a problem is because we're just eating tons of hamburgers, you know, and fried chicken. You know, I know. Well, I mean, I know they're tasty, but um, you know, it's it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of animal lard. You know, that's that's the catch. I, don't, I mean, I don't. I love it. I don't eat it. But yeah. I mean, it tastes great. It tastes great. I'm with Donnie. Like, I love the fake chicken, like, and I know how bad that is too. But it's so delicious. Um. So my other question we were talking about before, um, we were talking about the oil and how like, you cook like olive oil at high temperature with it. If you're gonna like roast vegetables, like what would you do? Coconut or butter? Yeah. yeah. How do you toss heat them stable. in something that yeah. like do you heat the coconut oil first so that it's not solid? I just don't really roast that thing. So I know. Because you probably roast a raw stuff. No, like no, I'm definitely not a raw food. food. No, a huge portion of my plant foods are cooked. I'm a they huge. Uh, yeah, I talked about how uh, I'm a huge fan of vegetable soups and stews. That's kind of my specialty, actually. Uh, I can send you a recipe that I really like. Did you like Monday's dinner? That vegetable soup? Did you like that? You did. Is that yours? Yeah, it's one of my recipes. Yeah, that's good. Um, I don't, I, like, I tend to just, okay. I roast a lot of vegetables, though, I love okay. it. Yeah. Um, That's right. And I usually do them in olive oil and put them at, like, 400 degrees. Right. Sounds like it's probably yeah. the best thing. I mean, you look healthy, so, everybody, every, uh, thank you. Bo- and you look thinner, though. Body type, everybody, body types are all different. I know that the Italians get away with sauteing and cooking a lot of olive oil, but they also don't eat tons of hamburger and fried chicken and french fries. I, I stopped. I mean, I know this year, other than the last month, I started 